Today, in my very messy and cluttered studio, we are going to be doing some small product photography. I'm James Fisher, and this is Vintage Insight Photography. A few weeks ago, Sam Tian reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to review one of their light boxes. I said yes, and they did provide me with this light box to review. As always, this review is going to be my own honest opinion. They have not asked me to review it in any certain way, and in fact, they won't see this review until after you have. Sam Tian has had zero input in how I review this product, what I photograph with it, and my final results. I do have a different light box, and it is very different than this one. The other light box I have is basically a white tent in which I can put lights on the outside. It's got a couple different fabric backdrops, and I light it from the outside, either with strobes or with continuous lighting. This light box has provided LED lights that go in the light box. It's silver, so it reflects the light all the way around. It's hard side as opposed to a pop-up tent like my other, and um, I think is it's gonna be a little different to work with. We're gonna see how it works. I haven't even put it together yet. It's right over here on the table. So we're gonna set it up and do some actual product photography that I need to do. Let's see if we can put this together without any instructions. There's two LED panels right here that hook somehow into this. Here's the backgrounds, there's different colors. There's a, a baby blue, there's a gray, there's a red, there's a peach color, I guess, a white and a black. And these are, they're a plastic type material so they won't have wrinkles in them, which is an issue with my other light box in that it's fabric and oftentimes I have to get out the iron and press them to get rid of some of those wrinkles. Set these aside for now. The box itself is hard sided. It comes in this case that Vel, oh, doesn't come in a case. It is the case. So we'll open this up. We can see the sides are silver on the in, on the inside and then here's a, a little shoot through thing we're going to set that aside too okay well, it looks to me these will go this way this obviously has to go like this somehow and this up this way um, Hold a shoot through here. Large hole to shoot through right here. But I have kind of set up the box. As you can see, it's right here. And in fact, behind me, right there, you can see the uh, other box that I've been using. I think I'm going to need to resort to looking at the instructions here. Let's see what's going on. You hook this together, it shows this as the bottom, right here. And then this is the front. Oh, maybe so that's you can get a top-down view. Yes, right there. And then those lights and all. So it says to unfold this way, the Velcro, and then we put our background paper in. So let's start out with the blue. That's quite blue right there. There's a slot right here. This pushes up into. And then there's another one right here where this pushes into. We're going to move the camera in a minute. right away is that that doesn't want to stay and I've got a bit of a wrinkle. So it's almost like it's a little bit too long. The instructions show these two lights as being able to hang, attach right onto this thing. There's slots right in there. There, that fits right in there. That fits right there. And then these rotate as well. Same thing, these, these little things rotate so as you can mount these at any angle. So I'm going to mount them up top at first so the light will be shining straight down. I wonder if 
I went against the grain. There's already a bend in this, and I went the other way. It would be more likely to stay. We'll find out. Well, it does seem to push a little more into everything. The switch right here. Wow, that's bright. That's brightness and dimness. The universal control. One controls the Kelvin, so I can bring the Kelvin temperature down to more daylight, or to, I guess that's incandescent light, or all the way up to daylight. And then I can change, change the mode, and then I'm changing the brightness. Yeah, and then I can bring this down in the front, and then there's light that shines all the way in the front. Open this up. shoot right through this opening. We can take this and it can mount onto these Velcros here. And then it'll mount to the Velcros down here. And then I can shoot right through this. It will kind of block. We'll try to do a photograph of this box of Fujifilm. Acros 100 that the old camera guy sent me. I'm going to use the camera handheld for this. I have my Fujifilm XE3. I have the white balance set to daylight and I have these lights set to daylight. And actually as I look at this, I've got a really nice light right off the get-go on this. And this actually puts a little punch, a little light right back up in there. Let's drop this guy down. We'll see if I can photograph through that and get anything approximating what I'm looking for. About the only difficulty I'm really seeing with this is how much the light temperature, the color is being changed by that blue background because it's bouncing all over everywhere inside there. But uh, I am already astounded at how good this thing works. I've set up the black background in here now, and I put that Calamar 660 in there, and I've dropped this front flap so I have some of the light bouncing off of the silver back on this, back onto that camera. And this is one of the photographs that I was really planning on taking of, if you can believe it or not, I'm actually going to be selling this Calamar 660. Um, and I know it's a camera I've had since I was probably 16, 15 maybe even 14 years old, thinking back. But it's, it's time to let her go. But we're going to do a couple photographs here. I really like how it, this lights inside. It's actually pretty darn amazing in that silver box. The thing that I'm not really keen on at this point is the reflectance value of this black background. It's, it's shiny, so I'm picking up some reflections off of it. I may grab a different color. I thought it would be a nice complement. But I'm wondering if that pale gray, a little better background for this. Let's change that out. One thing that I am really enjoying about this box compared to the other light box I have is this is hard side and I'm able to get a little lower and photograph things a little better. That soft sided box I had, that white box, I mean I had to light it from the outside and it wasn't as reflective as this is on the inside of it so I had to light with quite a few different lights. But I would often have to put a box or something in there underneath whatever it was I was photographing. And then that made it a little difficult because the box was never quite level. It was usually a cardboard box. If it was anything heavy, it would kind of be tippy. This is very, very sturdy and solid. I did ask them to send me the little smaller model because I was looking for the most portable type unit that I could have. But this, what I'm photographing right now, the Calamar with its assortment of three lenses and the extension tubes, is a little tight for this. So in Capture One or an Affinity Photo, I'm going to have to extend the background out a little bit on this shot. I did want to show you also on this that has a separate door that opens up. So if you need to do top-down photography, you can simply look right through this window 
And then there's your top down shot. Of course, I've got this light bar right here is in the way. What do I think about this thing now that I've shot some photographs with it? Quite frankly, I like it more than I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna kind of rip this thing apart a little bit. I'm pleasantly surprised. The reflectiveness of the backgrounds were a little bit of an issue to me, but that was pretty easily remedied. These plastic backgrounds can't go in the way they're folded. You have to counter fold them so that it'll, it'll provide some tension in there to help hold it up. After that, pretty darn happy with how this thing works. Very small, flat, lightweight, portable, 70 bucks, pretty cheap. And that's with the lights and the lights are dimmable and can change colors. You can use anywhere from an incandescent color right around 3200 Kelvin to a daylight color. So probably around 5600 degrees Kelvin. Do I recommend it? If you need something like this, it might be something to look at. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I'll have a link to this below in the description. I get nothing for that. This is just to inform you. And speaking of informing you, I've got other videos right here that are gonna help inform you with things photographically or take you on a photographic adventure. I am James Fisher. This is Vintage Insight Photography. Thanks for joining me here today.